Welcome to the Referrals Podcast, the show designed to help everyone from the solopreneur to the Fortune 500 company win the referral game. If you want to build a company with an army of ambassadors and raving fans who speak highly of you and refer you willingly, you are in the right place. And now, here is your host, Michael J. Mayer. Welcome, 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 everybody, back to an amazing episode of Referrals Podcast. Wouldn't you like to know what our March Magic Referral Challenge winner did to win the challenge? Wouldn't you like to know? One of the things that everybody was talking about after the March Magic Challenge was this lady, like her responses, her her what was going on with her business, the the where she was coming from, her heart, her soul, her spirit. And you know what? We're going to give you a taste of that today. I can't wait to get into that, but you know what? I am going to make you wait. One real quick thing that I want to do is I want to give a shout out to someone who listens to the podcast weekly. How do I know that? That's what they wrote in their five-star review. I listened to the podcast weekly. I had a long drive and decided to go back and listen to the very first episodes again. And wow, all caps, exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. There is gold in those first few episodes. If you have not gone back to the first few episodes, I definitely suggest that you do that. That is actually from John Cena, but it's not spelled like the John Cena, right? The John Cena that that we know and love from wrestling, but it's actually S-E-Y-N-A. So, but John Cena, I appreciate you. Thank you for giving us a five-star review. For those of you that listen regularly, watch regularly, hey, listen, rate us, review us, share the podcast. We're doing good things here. The world is evolving to this generosity generation, this whole heart and soul and spirit of, you know what, is people don't want to be sold to, but they want to buy. And they also want you to ask them questions and hear them and help them versus find them and sell them. So the bottom line is referrals podcast. I'm so excited about the future. We just had our meeting this morning about what we're gonna be doing in the future on referrals podcast. Lots of really cool things coming. So thank you for tuning in now and please tune in later as well. Our call to action is, hey, listen, if you wanna learn the 7L at a deeper level, maybe you've read the book, maybe you've read it two or three times. We have a book club, 7L book club, And you can go through the book chapter by chapter with someone who has been through the book 12 times and is teaching the book club once again. Uh, It's a class favorite. It's an RMA favorite. You, now it's open to everybody. It starts on May 2nd. You can join at 7lbookclub.com. That's the number seven, letter L, bookclub.com, 7lbookclub.com. It starts soon. Go check it out. If you like what you see, sign up. Maybe your life can be changed as well. And that leads us to today. I have to tell you, I'm very honored and excited to welcome our referrals podcast guest today. Helena Jacino is our guest today, and she was the winner of our March Magic Referral Challenge in 2022. And what's really cool about this is that we had more signups than ever before. Almost a thousand people going through this referral challenge and Who came out on top? It was Helena. And what was amazing about that is she's so soft-spoken, so unassuming, and yet there's a tiger inside. There's a lion and tiger. I'm I'm telling you, I can't wait for you to hear more from her. She's a realtor out of Appleton, Wisconsin, and has been in the business, get this, for over 32 years. And she's still signing up for classes. She's still doing RMA. She's still doing, she is learning and growing. and, And I'm telling you, there's a light there that I've really enjoyed getting to see and know. She's been a member of the Generosity Generation for two years now, and she stepped up in a big way to win our latest challenge. Let's welcome to the Referrals Podcast, Helena Cicino. How are you doing? Great. Thanks, Michael. Glad to be here with you. Well, 32 years in the business. I mean, have you seen it all? Um, Just when you think you've seen it all, you haven't. Every day you learn something new. Every day there's a new challenge. Isn't that the truth? It it so I'm telling you, 32 years. And have you been in Appleton, Wisconsin, the whole time? I have. And that, wow, right? I mean, how much growth has Appleton seen in 32 years? Um, a whole lot. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, first of all, what made you decide to sign up for March Magic? 
Well, I did March Magic last year and totally enjoyed it. Um, it inspires you. It gets you going, gets you thinking. And I need um, structure and classes to keep me going, um, especially this year. Yeah, and right out of the gate, it, it, one of the things that I've been speaking on, I, I just got back from speaking in uh, New Hampshire, Maine, uh, Massachusetts area, and it, it's like this, this slogan has come out of my head that I really see with not just the agents, but the, but the consumers too, is, is forever, or at least for the last two years, forever the last two years, we've been caged and enraged like literally caged and we've been more divisive, I think overall, even the agents have been divisive. And it's one of those where there's an evolution. I see this this process where it's like the agents and the consumers are going from caged and enraged to uncaged and engaged. Everybody's starting to engage more. Like it's like human interaction is starting again for the first time without hesitation. You know, I think there was communication and interaction during the two years but there was always this this hesitation this this like you know like you know like a mask right there was just this this wall almost between but i'm seeing like uncaged and people are starting to engage at a, at a higher level and i think you're a real indicator of that with this year is that you know you really kind of came out of your cage came out of your your shell a little bit and really engaged with uh, March Magic, but it didn't happen immediately, right? No, so you it were didn't. actually out of out of town or out of out of the country when March Magic started. Right, I was gone for ten days, and I debated: do should I do this or should I not? And you know, after I thought about it, I'm like, I really need this more than ever. I almost lost my husband, Rich, uh, September 30th. He had an aortic dissection. Mm. Got a nice helicopter ride to Madison for $37,000, uh, but they saved wow. his life. And so we had to be quarantined in our house because if he got COVID, it would have killed him for about three months. So with all of that going on, plus everything with COVID and that, I kind of, I'm always the outgoing, get it done, and I kind of hid under a rock. Mm. I kind of lost my drive. I kind of lost my Helena. And when I saw the March Madness coming up, I'm going, I'm going to do this. I'm going to rock this. I can do this and go for it, Helena, because you need to be back to the way you used to be and be there for your clients. I have to tell you, I mean, the fact that you won and started 10 days late is uh, amazing because, you know, two years ago, Jana Caudill was our only winner and she was a runaway winner. In fact, her group to this day has, I think, 17,000 people in it for Facebook group and she gets enough referrals just from that one group that that's her business. I mean, she does a lot of outside business as well, but that is basically replaced what her business was before with just this group. She's doubled her business and more. And then last year we had, uh, we made it a little tougher and guess what? We ended up with like 12 winners last year and, and it's like, all right, we got to make this even tougher. We got to make it more stringent. We got to have them do more. We got to have, and so this year's March, we did March Madness Challenge for years. And then the last two years we've done the March Magic Challenge. Thank you NCAA for those wonderful, friendly emails or uh, messages and letters about getting rid of the March Madness thing. But we've done March Magic the last two years. And it's one of those where this is the toughest, most stringent we've ever been. And it was hard. You know, I mean, there were some of these challenges that took people all day just to get the challenge done. And you're starting 10 days late. So I think the first message here for everybody is it's not how you start, it's how you finish. How did you catch up? I, I honestly want to know that. Like, how the heck did you end up catching up and, and passing everybody? Well, the biggest thing was time blocking. Um, I'm starting to get better at that. Um, and I just time blocked part of my morning, part of my afternoon. And then if I knew it was going to be a, a harder thing for me to do a harder project or whatever our assignment was, then I would go in and automatically put that time in so that I would get those projects done. So time blocking for the win, you know, 
I, I mean, once again, I'm hoping the listeners here finally, like, what has time blocking done for you? Like, you know, um, you, you've rebelled against it. You hesitated to implement it. Now you're putting it into play. What, what did you get? What do you see as the difference between time blocking versus not time blocking? Well, I was always a terrible time blocker, and now I am getting better and better at it. It gives you your life back. Um, I, when I time block and I put my appointments on my calendar, I call that my million-dollar appointment. I'm not going to miss that appointment. I'm not going to miss that task or whatever it is because it's going to co- it could cost me a million dollars. So mm-hmm. when I focus on my time blocking, I have to do them, and I have to do them at that time. So you just make it happen, and it gets you um, – more time in the end because if I plan my clothes and lay them out the week, the Sunday before or the night before, if I go grocery shopping and plan a list so I don't have to think every night, what are we going to have and then go get fast food and it's terrible for you. If you time block and you do those things, your whole life is just so much happier and healthier and just better. That's awesome. And do you have somebody remind you for the different things on your time block or how do you make sure that you do it? You know, that's the thing that I think some people do is they go to a class and they maybe even go through our time mastery or whatever other things that we've taught with time blocking and they put together a time block and then all of a sudden it doesn't happen, right? Because it's too stringent or it's, it's, you know, there's just no accountability to doing the items that are on your schedule, right? And I believe that integrity isn't just doing what you promise others, it's doing what you promise yourself, right? I mean, fulfill your promises with yourself, but that's easier said than done sometimes. So how do you stay on track with your time block? Um, Well, I get a reminder a half an hour before my appointment and 15 minutes before, and I have everything out and ready to go that I need to do to do that. Like the thing I struggle with the most was the first in tens. And I don't know why, because I've been doing this long enough. I shouldn't have that fear of calling people, but I always feel like I'm bugging them mm-hmm. and I don't want to bug them, but I'm here to help them. So it's just a different thinking. And instead of first in 10, I renamed it 10 at 10. So because I, I'm in the office usually six thirty, seven o'clock. And so I can't do it right away because mm-hmm. people are still in bed or getting up. So if I plan that and I do it twice a week, And I just have a planner. I just write as I'm thinking of people, write their names down, make those calls. Um, And it's such an accomplishment when you get it done. You just have to put it on your calendar. There's no excuse. Again, it's my million dollar appointment that you're not going to turn down a listing for a million dollars. I can't turn down my first and tens and I can't turn down what I have blocked to get done for the day. Yeah, I love that. I, I, I love the 10 at 10. I, I think I love your name for it better than my name for it, right? The first and 10 versus the 10 at 10. I mean, the bottom line is is you're getting 10 calls done sometime during the day. And I, I love that. And then also, I just, I just love that you're using the electronic reminders, you know, that are going to tell you 15 minutes before that, hey, listen, these are coming so that you can get a drink of water. You can do a little research on Facebook. You can, you know, you can prepare yourself for those calls to make them more enjoyable. And you hit something on the head that I, I really have to let everybody know is, is are you doing lead generation or are you doing generosity generation? And and maybe it's it's to the point where our listeners need to evolve from doing lead generation calls to doing generosity generation calls. The difference as uh, Helena just said, is that the lead generation, you feel like you're bugging, you feel like there's a, there is an ulterior motive to your call. Whereas with generosity generation, generosity, you're generating generosity, is you're calling to help, you're calling to invite, you're calling to congratulate, you're calling to celebrate, you're calling with an opportunity or a referral or a connection or an introduction. You're calling to help their lives. Those calls are a heck of a lot more easy to make than a lead generation call, right? They're, and they're fun to make too. And then after I make the calls, whether I get a hold of them or not, I send them a text. If I talk to him, he has great talking to you. And then I send him a card. I've always been good all 32 years of getting people's birthdays, anniversaries. I put their home anniversaries. I put their home half year anniversaries in there too. Um, and the post office knows me by name and the Dollar Tree knows me by name. <laughs> And I send out at least 50 cards every, every week. Um, mm. 
And you have to time block that too, because it gets to be a handful when you have a whole bunch of birthdays and anniversaries to write out. So true. I love that. So you're, you're doing 50 calls a week and 50 cards a week. Yeah, at least plus birthdays, anniversaries and everything else. Love it. I love it. And all right. So the very first challenge that we do on March Magic, and for those of you that are going to do our Summerfest referral challenge, I just want you to know day one challenge, you can prepare yourself right now because it's going to be the same thing. And November, it's going to be the same thing. So it uh, the first challenge was why? Why did you sign up for the March Magic Challenge? Like, what is your why? So what was your why going in? What did you write then um, when you when you signed up for the March Magic Challenge? What did you write then? Do you remember? Yep, I do. My why was to get back to being the Helena that I have been. Mm-hmm. My why was to go back to real estate and love it mm-hmm. and stop worrying about life and my husband and is he going to be okay the next minute, the next hour, the next day? I needed to get refocused. I had a big why this year. Yeah, I and it was that. it was me. My why was me. I needed to get back to me. F L Y, right? First, love yourself, and uh, then I mean, it's really hard to love the world. It's really hard to love your family. It's really hard to love what you do if if you don't love yourself. You know, I mean, we gotta first love ourselves. We gotta figure out a way. Yeah, that comes with grace. That comes with patience. That comes with kindness. That comes with, you know, a, no envy, right? It comes with a lot of things, and especially grace in my case. So it's one of those where it's like, uh, first love yourself. You decide that you were gonna you were gonna re-energize Helena, right? Which yeah. is awesome since Helena isn't that a Greek, isn't that a Greek goddess? Right? Is that what that? Yeah, is I from? believe it is. Yeah, yeah. Like, didn't I think they fought a whole like Helen of Troy, right? I think uh, that whole yeah. thing. So, um, so what was the what was the? And I'm curious on this. What was the hardest challenge for you out probably, of the thirty? Probably the first in ten. That and exercise. I I'm working on that now. I'm just starting to get better with that. I've committed myself. I heard on the radio something about. Cancer Society, um, walk 30 miles in May. So I'm going to walk 30 miles in May of 31 days. So I'm going to do a mile a day. And if I miss a day, I'll have to do two miles. Um, But I need to get back to my health. And that's probably my biggest struggle is the eating plan is great and it helps. But when you don't prepare and you don't plan, then it goes to the wayside. Yeah, that I mean, chalk one up for the Sunday night ritual, right? You've mentioned it several times without me necessarily calling it out, but that's that's the system. That's the ritual of, you know, putting together, you know, looking at the schedule, looking at your weather for the week, and then, you know, putting together your eating plan, putting together your exercise plan, and then the T is tie all those things together, right? Lay out your outfits for your work, lay out your outfits for your workouts, you know, make sure you've got the preparation for your meals. And I mean, that system in itself has changed a lot of lives. And it's one of those where, you know, do we do it every Sunday? Almost, like almost. And why don't we do it every Sunday? Max has three games on Sunday and we're out, we're doing other things. Well, here's what I know about those weeks after we miss the Sunday night ritual. It's catch up, it's crazy. It's like, I, I like get jittery, like Monday night, I'm laying out my outfits for the rest of the week because I was so discombobulated on Monday. And it, whereas if we do the Sunday night ritual, I'm like the boss all week and let's go, like prepared, not having to think about those little decisions that wear away at your big decisions, your good decisions, your, you know, at your energy, right? It's all about energy. Right. So, um, yeah, and it was interesting you said the first and 10 was one of your hardest challenges um, because you've taken that and it's become a habit. It's become part of you. It, it has. Um, the more you do it, and, and like I said, if I'm just thinking of somebody, I have a three ring binder. I just start writing their names. And if I'm on Facebook and I see something, I put their name in and what? And then when I go make those calls, you just start making them. And if they're not there, you leave a message. Hey, I noticed on Facebook, blah, blah, blah. Or I was just thinking about you or whatever the case might be. And it's just neat to catch up. But I also put notes in my Google under my people. So I know what we talked about. So next time I call them, if I need to, I can refresh myself with what we talked about last time. What? 
talking about the first intent, was that the most impactful challenge day for you, or what was the most impactful day for you during the March Magic Challenge? Uh, mine was day 28 with Polly. Um, he talked about purpose and purpose that really got me. Um, and like, what is our purpose and how we need to sit there, relax and breathe and think our gratitudes and what inspires me. And then he said, think of the day you got your real estate license. Well, when I got it 32 years ago, it took a month to find out if you passed the test because they mail you a postcard. But I could remember that like it was yesterday. And that got me so excited to go back to the day I got my real estate license. And that just, it made me just feel amazing. And so when I feel like I'm going to get in the slumps or the dumps or an offer got rejected, I go back and it's okay, Helena, you know, I can help them find something else or it'll be better. And that just really inspired me. I love that because something that like the listeners and viewers may or may not know is that during the March Magic Challenge, we did something different this year. In the past, it had always been me delivering the content on a daily basis. And this year, we incorporated the certified referral trainers into the 30-day challenge and had them teach a segment, teach a piece of it. And we kind of did it as a pilot, as an experimental thing. And and what I mean, how do you think? Uh, obviously, we need to make sure we include Polly, right? But how do you think that was as far as adding some variety and spice to the 30 day challenge versus it just being like one person, one kind of set thing every day. Well, honestly, the first time it wasn't you, I'm like, Oh my God, where is Michael? I need Michael. I want Michael. And then you came back and you did one and then it was somebody else. And I go, okay, I got this and it's good. But the first couple days you weren't on there, it was like a little heartbreak, you know, because it was like you just have that go to get to go. In. But I loved the new the new layout. What a great answer. I don't care if that's the honest answer or not, but I'm going with it. And I'm just telling you that uh, that makes me feel better. But I, I love that. I, we've had great comments about it. And, and uh, it sounds like something that we can definitely do in the future. We should probably mentally prepare people that it might not be me every day. Uh, but uh, it's one of those where... Um, it was a lot of fun. It was great for me to see my CRTs kind of spread their wings and, and teach a segment as well. So, you know, there was kind of that proud papa moment as well during the time. So, all right. So what did you learn from the March Magic Challenge? What were the results like for you? Well, I learned that it's great to reconnect. I made a commitment for 31 days. I did my commitment. Anything is possible. I mean, you just have to put your mind to it. And um, what I've learned to do is one thing at a time. Do one thing, finish it before you start another one. Mm -hmm. I used to be the person who would do five different things and then it'd be squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. And so I'm really focusing on one thing at a time, get it done. And then you have the accomplishment of doing it. And it just makes you feel great. Um, so I think that's probably the biggest yeah, what a, I mean, we kind of come from this culture that celebrates multitasking. And and yet, how things really get done is sequential tasking. Like doing one thing at a time, getting it done, and then moving to the next thing. And um, I love that. And, and I think that's one of the powers of the 30-day challenge is what a lot of people don't know is that they are actually sequentialized and spiraled the way they are on purpose because it they build on each other and then we go back and kind of review one with the added tweak like the sunday night ritual we'll add the weather we'll add the eating plan we'll add the extra but they're kind of spiraled in but they all build on each other and what i hope to show during a 30-day challenge especially the referral challenges is that it is this accumulative effect that really starts the referrals coming in and it really starts you kind of see the results faster because they build on the previous one so did you experience any of that or or was it just one of those where it's like man just doing all of them kind of mushroom clouded on, on its own 
I think doing all of them, as you said, mushroom cloud on its own. But um, what I'd like to do is keep doing the March magic, do a March April, or do it in April, do it in May, because being um, having a system and having time blocking and, and having a schedule. I have been so busy. Like my phone is ringing like crazy. I listed a couple of properties last week, presenting offers today and tomorrow on them. So I think it's like going on vacation. You start learning all this stuff or redoing stuff you haven't done, doing your savers. I love my savers every morning. It gives you a purpose. It gets you energized and focused. And the day just, you make the day the way the day is going to be. And it gives you a purpose to be a better person and a better you. Yeah, so you mentioned savers with your morning ritual, which is, you know, we sprinkle that into the 30-day challenge. But had you taken 30 mornings before, or was this your first exposure to the ultimate morning ritual? I've actually done 30 mornings a couple times, and yeah. I totally enjoy it. And I don't know, sometimes it's easy to get off track, mm -hmm. and then it's hard to get back on track. So I am really, I start before I'm even out of the bed now, so that I have a system. I start with, you know, the silence, you have that. Um, and then you have your appreciations, your affirmations, and you just start it. And then you brush your teeth right away, as you say, get what you need done. And I just do. The only bad part of Sabres is the E. I've been bad at it. <laughs> it used to be bad. It's getting it better. Be bad. It's getting yeah. better. And yeah. what's funny is you said earlier that it's easy to get off track. It's hard to get back on track. Or it's easy to get off track and it's hard to get back on track. And the thing is, that's not true for you anymore. The, the yeah. truth is, is you've discovered a way. I mean, you were 10 days behind and ended up winning. I don't think, I don't think that's even possible. I mean, it's just like how that, it, that is uh, an accomplishment in itself, right? Is that lots I of mean, discipline? Yeah. Lots of discipline and spending the time and, and making it happen. And I, I truly, it really is. It was like KU with the national championship, right? They were down 16 in the first half, down 15 at halftime, worst half of basketball ever. And yet nobody cares about what the halftime score was. They only care about the final score. KU ended up winning by three, right? And they won and they won the second half and by 18, obviously. And it was just one of those where it doesn't matter how you start. It matters how you finish. And, you know, it doesn't matter when you start. Just start. And I, I, I love it. There's so many great lessons in here for, I mean, life in general, let alone winning the referral challenge. So how about, let's talk, like, professionally and personally, how would you sum up your experience with the, the March Magic Challenge, Referco, and, and everything that we're doing there? Well, personally, it's helped give me peace. It's helped get me back to where I was. It helped excite me and get me going. Um, professionally, um, because I didn't have a great beginning of the year and of last year, and, and I was okay with that. You know, it was all right because he was my priority and real estate wasn't. Um, so professionally, I'm as busy as can be thanks to March Magic and Generosity Generation and you, Michael. It, if it wasn't for you guys, I don't know where I'd be. Mm, powerful. Well, uh, if somebody was considering taking March Magic or Summerfest or November of any the, the 30 or 30 mornings for that for that purpose, right? What would you what would your words of wisdom for them be? What would your advice be? Probably the best advice I would have is make sure you put it on your calendar every day. Make that commitment. There's no excuses. You can't give an excuse because once you do one excuse, you're going to have more. And that's just not in your vocabulary. Just commit to it and do it. I did March Magic last year. I was one of the top 12. And this year I'm like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to rock this and I'm going to have fun. And I did. So plan it, block it, commit to yourself. You're going to do it. And you will be so busy and feel better about yourself and make other people feel better just because of the way you are. Yeah, love that. Such great advice. And, you know, reminds me of the Jim Rohn quote where, you know, your life will never change until you change and your life will never change until you change something you do daily. And that's the root. That's the whole reason for our 30 day coaching challenges is because we can coach you every day. I look back at like, who were the coaches that made the biggest impact on me? And it wasn't somebody I talked to once a month. It wasn't somebody I talked to even twice a month. It was somebody that had either daily or weekly uh, interaction with me that made the biggest impact on me. 
So that's that's the root of all these 30 day challenges is that you why should we coach the morning ritual over 12 months and hope you put it in place when we could teach you in 30 days and help you put it in place, literally help you hand in hand, put it in a place and then how you change it and tweak it for the rest of your life is there. But I truly believe the way that this has to happen is, is a massive series of one degree tweaks. I really believe that's how people change. That's how, you know, it's not massive action in one moment. I don't believe in that. Right. I don't need you. I don't think you need to burn all your clothes that fit right now to get on a diet so that you lose weight. Right. I don't, I think what you need to do is add one little habit each day. Like you said, with the walking, I, a mile is not very far to walk. It's not, you can do it. So you're like, Oh my gosh, I can do it. And then you add this to your savers and it fits perfectly. And then you put the earbuds on and you've got your reading element with podcasts and books that you can listen to while you're walking. And I'm telling you some of the greatest ideas I've ever had in business. I just came up with something. I was working out and walking and stuff. And uh, I, I came up with this thing when, for my speaking engagement last week is like, we need our people to become phenomenal at communication. Like not just communicate when it's needed or reactively, but proactively and become a communicorn, right? A communicorn, a communication unicorn where people are like, that person is the best communicator in the world. Like be a communications unicorn, be a communicorn and not just be a communicorn, but be a badass communicorn, right? And so I had this picture drawn up of a communicorn basically, but it's like, how did I get that? walking, listening to podcasts and books, and just like thinking. And without the, the habit of that morning ritual, I would it, it would have never happened, you know? And it's just one of those where inner energy is the key. It's amazing how much energy we get from rituals and loving ourselves and having great structure and habits. Isn't that funny? We thought it was going to be so caging, so constrictive, to have structure and yet what we've discovered is that it's actually freeing right definitely so man this is awesome this this was fantastic any 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 um i mean anything else that, that i haven't asked you about that was an impact from the 30-day challenge um or anything else you want to say about like march magic in general like another uh thing that you might suggest to people or overarching comments well, you you have all these days, 30 days, and you have you do your assignment and some you're going to just go, I am going to do this every single day. And there are some of them go, you're like, oh, not me. You know what I mean? Um, and you don't have to do it all. Like you said, one degree tweak. But if you commit to 30 days, it's going to make you so much better and happier and focused. And it's just so worth doing it. I still have Summerfest on my calendar from last year. It still pops up every day. I'm so excited when that starts again, it'll already be on my calendar because it's on there from last year. So <laughs> it's idea. just it's just exciting. And, and I feel so much better, not only about myself, but about the world. And that shows, I mean, people aren't going to want to work with a frumpy realtor who's in the dumps and hiding under a rock because she got thrown a brick and had to deal with it. But you just just do it. There's just do it and be the best you, you can be. That's, I guess my best advice. And it's fun. It's exciting. Plus I wanted to win. I had to do it. I had to conquer it and I did it and it was great. That's awesome. And I love the competitive spirit too. You know, there's energy in competition, right? And, and there's energy in exercise. I truly believe that there's energy in learning and growth. And the other thing too is, is there's energy in food as well. The, the other thing too is that I love that you brought out is that it that's what we wanted these 30 day challenges to really be like is like a buffet and and each day you try something a little bit different and at the end of the month you've got one hopefully at least but maybe you've got two or three or four that you're going to incorporate for the long term like for you it was the first and 10 your 10 at 10. And for you, it was the handwritten notes, 50 handwritten notes uh, a week, plus your your celebratory notes that you're sending out. Um, and, and then the savers, right? You're doing the morning ritual more structured and, and you know, you found a way that works for you. 
And, you know, and then the Sunday night ritual, you're, you're doing that. And it's like, all right, so, you know, you're taking the pieces that work for you and, you know, don't worry about the rest. I, and I, I, that's the best advice I could ever, ever say for anybody is, is there'll be challenges that you hate. There will be, I mean, it's just, it is, there'll be challenges that don't agree with you or it seems a little foo-foo or, or whatever it may be. And then there's challenges that are going to really resonate in your heart and your soul and your spirit, and you're going to keep them forever. And, uh, you know, that's the beauty behind it, I think. And, you know, the other nice thing is, is you have the ability to get lots and lots of referrals. And like you said, you, you went from kind of subdued Helena to, to this lit you up. I, that if, if I, like when we were on the, the final, uh, celebratory challenge and announcements, um, webinar, I, it was like you, you had lit up in 30 days. You would, I mean, this really lighted you up. And, um, I, I love that. It is like who, I mean, listen, it's hard to find a realtor in the dark, right? But if you are lit up, people can find you during the day, during the night, and they are attracted to the light, like moths to a flame, right? I mean, there, it's one of those where, you know, it's, it's like a lighthouse. You, you lit yourself up. And that's been really, really attractive for people who need help. And uh, I, I love it. I, I, I tell you, it's been, it's been awesome to see your growth. And it's been awesome having you a part of the generosity generation. You represent so well. You're so helpful. You've helped so many of the members. And uh, I just want to say thank you so much for finally getting on to Referrals Podcast. We finally had a chance to chat with you. And I want to congratulate you once again on, on winning the March Magic Challenge. Congratulations on that. Thanks, Michael, and thanks for igniting me. I needed it bad, and I'm, I'm unstoppable now. Look out. Watch out. I love it. Listeners, I will tell you that you, too, can be unstoppable. You probably are unstoppable, and what we have to do is just release that light from within and, and just, like, there's a little spark inside of you that's been caged and enraged, unfortunately, and now it's time to uncage and engage with people who are also uncaged and engaged and ready to interact with you. That's what we're here to help you do. When you engage and you interact with people, what happens is they tend to want to inter- introduce you, connect you, and refer you. That's what we're here for at Referrals Podcast is to help you with those interactions. The new ABC, right? The old ABC, always be closing. Done. Forget it. You don't want to make, make people feel awkward. You want to make people feel awesome. How do you do that? ABC, always be connecting. Always be connecting. Connect with people one-on-one and also connect the people in your network to build a very, very strong network. A net is always stronger than a rope. Make sure you're connecting the people in your network. People, I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for listening and viewing Referrals Podcast. If you liked what you saw today, subscribe, rate, review it. Let us know what you thought. And of course, join us at joingengen.com. Join the generosity generation today. And we'll see you in that Facebook group. We'll see you next time on the next episode of Referrals Podcast.